Our final panelist on the business panel is uh, Professor Hugh Whitaker, and he is currently, I have to read, read out his job, he's the director of the New Zealand Asia Institute and professor and head of department of management and international business at Auckland University. Um, we've heard from employers today, we've heard from unionists, and um, we've heard from industry people. I think it's high time we heard from an intellectual, and we're very, very pleased to have you here today, mate. Not sure that you do want to hear from an intellectual, <laughs> but you're going to anyway. Um, I think you should consider my comments simply um, supplements to what you've heard, because um, while I'm not going to speak about macroeconomic policy, I think it is really important. Um, and while I'm not going to speak about the immediate loss of jobs, I think they're very important too. Um, but I'm going to stand back a little bit and uh, take as given, as most people here will um, agree, manufacturing does matter. Manufacturing is important for our economy, and it's very easy to lose, but it is really difficult to build up because there are a lot of capabilities and intricacies in manufacturing, so we should value it. That's my starting point. Manufacturing matters, but what kind of manufacturing? I re returned to New Zealand from uh, overseas about six years ago, and I've kind of heard two visions of manufacturing articulated. One is around technology-oriented manufacturing, high-tech, weightless. We can overcome the tyranny of distance to export markets, and, and we agree that exports are important. We can overcome that through weightless economy, high-tech jobs, intellectual property, and so on. They create uh, high-value jobs, and, and we should promote those. That's one kind of vision. There are other kinds of visions around we have lots of primary resources. How can we turn those into value-added goods and export them to overseas markets? Both, I think, uh, th they tend to be posed as competing views. I think they're complementary. I think we should um, take a rather broad approach to valuing manufacturing um, that does value high-tech, but also because it creates jobs and it creates jobs out of si out of cities in regional areas, the kind of uh, resource-based processing and value-adding jobs are also important too. Um, but in order to get high-value jobs uh, and high-value-added manufacturing, I also think um, business models matter. And uh, when I look at how we process our primary uh, products particularly, uh, we may have very good products. We may have very good grass and rainfall, a real competitive advantage. But we ship them off overseas and we tend not to get very much for them. And I think, you know, we have learned to talk the talk of global value chains, but we are not very good at actually walking it. And we've heard about user-led innovation, customer-led innovation is also important, and if we're going to get better returns so that we can invest in innovation, we have to think about complementary jobs and skills like how do we get to high-end, high-paying customers in Asia, for example. So how we do this, the business models that we use do matter, otherwise we end up with continual pressure to cut costs and we end up with um, low wage, a low-wage economy. So we have to be mindful of um, not just what manufacturing, but our business models. Third point, and this I think is my, um, my most important question for myself, um, the EPMU had a conference a couple of months ago and invited a guy called Rusover who talked about Germany's Mittelstand and how that was really important for Germany to come out of the global financial crisis. These are medium-sized manufacturers who uh, often are family-run businesses. They have two or three core technologies. They're often global leaders in, in certain niches. 
We have a rather interesting industrial structure in New Zealand. We have a lot of very small businesses and a lot of them are very innovative. We have some large businesses, but we don't really have a middle stand. So the question I have is how can we grow our smaller businesses into middle stand type of businesses, which not only are innovative, but they have the processes, they built up the capabilities to be cost effective, they provide the career structures that can keep more of our young people in New Zealand. I think that's a, a really crucial question. Final point is, um, okay, we have a lot of innovative small businesses. Entrepreneurship is uh, something New Zealand is well known for. We grow our businesses. The entrepreneurs get tired. They want to sell up. And uh, you, you will have seen in the newspapers around um, Fisher and Paykel's uh, appliances, the higher bid for, takeover bid for them, this debate about how many tin 100 companies have been sold in the last few years. I think investment does matter. I think the origin of investment does, does matter. But are there mechanisms that we can um, encourage so that we get the investment, which is capability building investment and not um, basically extractive investment. And I don't just mean from overseas, I mean from within New Zealand. And I think there are um, mechanisms, there, is, uh, there are signals that we can also send about the kinds of investment that will be welcome to help us build our capabilities in the long term. I say those as an academic, but I say them because I think you know, building um, manufacturing capabilities and building a middle stand is crucially important for us socially as well as economically.